All right, so we've seen how to share a classical secret using a quantum state. Now let's see how we could share a quantum secret using quantum states. So it's going to be a little bit challenging, and in particular, we're going to need to use three different parties among which to share the secret. And I'll tell you a little bit later why we needed three. We couldn't do it for two, and you can think about it already. So let's take a secret that's a quantum state, and for this scheme, we'll assume that the quantum state is a trit. Uh, there's three possible basis states for our space of secrets, 0, 1, and 2. And our goal is to distribute the secret into a tripartite entangled state that's shared between Alice, Bob, and Charlie, such that each of them has no information about the secret, so the reduced density matrix should be independent of the state that's originally shared, but uh, any quantum state I should be able to recover from the tripartite state if I have access to all three shares at once. So here's a scheme that will let you do this. I'll explain what the encoding is on basis states first. So let's take secret which is equal to zero and we're going to share this secret using the state one by root three normalization and then you know, a superposition of Alice having a zero, Bob having a zero, Charlie having a zero, or Alice, Bob, and Charlie each having a one, or Alice, Bob, and Charlie each having a two. Okay, so that's the encoding of the zero basis state. Now, let me tell you how to encode a one basis state. I used a little bit shorthand notation here, so we're going to encode it into the superposition of zero, one, two, shared between Alice, Bob, and Charlie, plus one, two, zero, plus two, zero, one. And a two, I'm going to encode as 0, 2, 1, plus 1, 0, 2, plus 2, 1, 0. So these are my three states. So the first thing to verify is that these three states are orthogonal. So they let us recover the original secret S when S is a basis state. So now if the secret is not a basis state, if it's a superposition alpha 0 times 0 plus alpha 1 times 1 plus alpha 2 times 2, then I'll simply encode it into the same superposition of the three states here, alpha 0 times the first state, alpha 1 times the second state, alpha 2 times the third state. And you can check that in this way, there is a perfect correspondence uh, between any uh, pure quantum state in C3 and certain states that are shared between Alice, Bob, and Charlie. So we can do perfect recovery. The other thing to verify is that uh, the secret sharing scheme is, is secure, meaning that the reduced densities on Alice, Bob, and Charlie are independent of the secret. And that's easy to check, because for each of the three states that I've been using here, the reduced density on either party is simply the totally mixed state. So it is always the case that rho A is equal to rho B is equal to rho C is one third of the identity. So this is a valid secret sharing scheme, and it encodes one qtrit into three Qtrits. Now, actually, it, this scheme has a property that's stronger than what I've been telling you so far. What we've seen is that you can recover the secret by taking all three shares together. Actually, you can recover the secret from two shares only. Let's see how we would do this. For instance, let's just suppose that Alice and Bob get together and they want to recover S. Here's how they can do it. So if Alice and Bob are together, they have these two Qtrits here. And note that in the first case, if I compute Bob's trit minus Alice's trit, I recover the secret. So a way to go from here to here is to simply compute the difference B minus A. And now this works in all three cases. If I look at it here, I compute B minus A. Here I will get 1. Here I will get 1. Here I get minus 2. I do the computation modulo 3. Minus 2 is the same as 1, and so I recover 1. Here again, take the difference, and it's always equal to 2. Here I get 2, here I get minus 1, which is the same as 2, and here I get again minus 1, which is the same as 2. And you can check that because my encoding is permutation invariant, this decoding procedure, simply taking the difference of the two shares, is going to work in all three cases. So actually I can always recover the secret from two of the qtrits. And that's not a coincidence. Actually what I've described to you here is more than a secret sharing scheme. It's an error correcting code, and it's an error correcting code that's secure or that's correct with respect to deletion of one of the three shares.
And this is exactly what's happening here. We can recover the original secret even if we lose one of the shares. Okay, so that's quite interesting. We've managed to encode one secret into three shares such that the secret can be recovered from any two out of the three shares. Now I let you think about generalizations of this. The theorem that you can prove is that for any number of parties n and number of shares k such that n is strictly less than 2k, you can distribute s in n shares in a way that you can perform recovery from any k. And we saw the simplest example of this theorem, which is in our case, we had n equals 3, k equals 2, and you can check that indeed it's the case that 3 is less than twice 2. Now, why this restriction? See that the theorem doesn't let us share anything between two parties, because if n is 2, k has to be at least 1, there's no way this inequality is going to be satisfied. And the reason for this impossibility is related to the no-cloning theorem. If you could distribute a secret in between two parties, such that any of them by itself can recover the secret, then you could recover two copies of the secret. So you would have created a cloning machine. And that's impossible. So no-cloning theorem is the condition that explains why this is a necessary condition, not the fact that it's a sufficient condition, that's the theorem, and I'll let you think about it if you're able to generalize this scheme. It's not completely trivial, but using ideas from error correcting codes, you can do it.